All right, hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I'm going to be showcasing what is in this bag and I bet you can't tell what that is. So this is a find that I made last year and I wanted to spend a little bit of time today showing it off to you. Now this is a pretty old machine. In fact, it's one of the oldest in my collection and it came in this authentic bag. So let's go ahead and, and open it. And what we have here is actually a ThinkPad 350C. Now the 350C is part of the 300 series, which during the early days was kind of the more budget conscious models. And it kind of shows the 700 series was the more luxurious brand, whereas the 300s were kind of the mid tier. That being said, they were still pretty expensive. And one of their claims to fame for the 300 series is that they took up about the same footprint as a sheet of paper, which is kind of neat. So the 350C was released in June of 1993, and it was made until September of the following year, 1994. And it is identical to the PS Note 425. Here we have the regular power supply, which we will need in just a moment. And if you need any more additional information, you can find it on the card that came with it on how to start your computer. And then of course, uh, a guide on making sure that Windows drivers for PCMIA are running correctly. So pretty cool to see these vintage items included as well. But what is probably just as cool is if you needed to use this on the go, here's your power inverter for a car. <laughs> Could you imagine um, just having this on like the seat of your vehicle or whatever, um, plugging in your laptop. It's just a, just a different age. And if you uh, didn't like the track point, of course, you had a mouse that came in a box with its own drivers as well. Let's get all this off to the side and talk a bit more about what's going on here with the 350C. Now the 350C also came in one other variant called the 350, which featured a monochromatic uh, 64 levels of gray screen. This features a 9.2 STN256 color screen. La dee da. The whole thing is being powered by an 8486 SL 25 megahertz CPU, four megs of RAM, up to 20 is supported, and either 125 or 250 megabyte drives were common from the factory. You had a chips and technology 65, 50, 30, uh, low bus 16 bit uh, video card. And then for ports, you had serial, parallel, VGA, and a modem. And the majority of those we can actually see on the rear of the device right here, uh, all in the back. The only things that you had on the side were the modem slot, if it was present, the three and a half inch floppy drive. This side was completely blank, as was the front. Now you will note I have a piece of cardboard here, and that is because some of the feet have started to decay and crumble into this gelatinous goop. Uh, so for the time being, I just keep the piece of cardboard underneath to keep my desk clean. And this might disappoint some of you, but I will not be taking this apart because it is brittle. <laughs> I'm actually afraid that this thing will decompose on me if I try to field strip it. Uh, so in here you can see the battery, which is just a bunch of cells um, packaged together. And those are nickel metal hydride. And this was uh, not, not too much of a battery. 2200 milliamps. Underneath this panel here, we can see a upgraded uh, RAM slot, as well as two batteries. Uh, one is a nickel cadmium uh, backup battery, and then of course one is your coin cell. And it looks like the coin cell might have been replaced at one point uh, during this thing's lifespan. Um, but those are the only things that you're really going in here for. Uh, and because they are affixed to the top, believe it or not, with Velcro, it makes this thing a little bit harder to maneuver. But if you want to take a look at the inside, uh, that would be one of the accessible ports. 
uh, tearing this thing down any further, I, uh, I'm not brave enough, <laughs> only because I'm afraid the whole thing will just disintegrate in my hand. With all that being said, I wouldn't be showing this on the channel unless it actually worked. And that's one of the exciting things, is that it does in fact work. And we're going to open this up. Now, the screen hinge has deteriorated somewhat, so there are very specific angles that this stays open at. And the key force here is uh, pretty firm, and I believe it's closer to uh, 220 grams, which is what you use for uh, vehicle buttons. Certainly the case down here. Uh, but the keyboard is beautiful. The track point here is one of the original style, although it has decayed a fair bit. And I am really trying to find places where I can source uh, this older style track point so I can replace it. If you have any idea where I might be able to find an original track point like that or a, a reproduction, make sure you're letting me know in the comments or send me an email or anything like that. What I'm going to do is I've got my secondary camera off to the side here, which I'll be using to film the screen and startup sequence. And yeah, we're going to kind of showcase what uh, running this thing is like because it is an experience. All right, so we've got it plugged in. Now he's got to flick the power switch. So, of course, it's going to complain about date and time battery. And here we are in the BIOS. And, of course, it says that battery is charged, but I do not believe it. All right, it currently thinks that it is May 1st of 1984, which it is not. Keyboard speed, display is LCD, reverse video, text color size, normal, contrast, vertical position, all that is normal. There's our processor. Looks like we've got 12 megabytes of RAM in here, which is pretty good. A 258 megabyte drive, which is looking quite nice. And everything else looks okay. So let's go ahead and not save any changes. And of course it's testing the extended memory on startup and launching into Windows 3.1. I'm actually really, really impressed with how good this screen looks for 30 years. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, it, this is a pretty rare opportunity, and I hope that you enjoy it. Let's bring that a little a little closer still. So I have installed a few games on this like SimCity and Scorched Earth, uh, but finding things that run on this is a bit of a challenge, um, <laughs> but it's just, it's just so incredible. Um, it's, a, it's a time capsule, no question about it. Let's open up some Microsoft Word And oddly enough, it's not the first one. This is 6.0. Yeah, now I remember the P key on this uh, doesn't work, unfortunately. And again, I don't want to take it apart right now just because I'm afraid of breaking it. Uh, the typing experience on that is unlike anything that we have today. No question about it. Um, it is firm. You are probably going to bottom out. Looks like my zero key is also out of action.
but yeah, 30 years old and uh, a couple of keyboard glitches, which could very easily just be the ribbon cable slowly detaching on the inside or something like that. Uh, that's pretty good. And we're going to turn off music because it is just PC speaker and it is painful. The commuters are getting militant highway shootings are on the rise. Either build more roads and rails or get a bulletproof limo. Man, games were different, weren't they? So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed the look at this beautiful sample from the era of essentially 30 years ago now. Uh, just wow. What a fun piece of kit. I'm really glad to have this uh, in the collection. There are definitely uh, some things to be careful with something this old because you just never know when one day it's going to quit. So getting one of these running in front of the camera, I think, was uh, pretty important for everybody, including myself. If you do have any questions or even if you have stories about using a ThinkPad 350C, make sure they're going in those uh, comment section down there so we can all have a good chat. And as always, if you enjoy looking at these older machines with me, uh, consider doing all this YouTube stuff down here to help uh, share this knowledge and this history with the world. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.